<clears throat> a Google Ads conversion and how we can actually do that using Google Tag Manager. So to get started, obviously you need a contact form on your website. And the point of this video is to basically give you an all-in-one solution. So regardless of how your contact form performs, you should be able to track it using this. So there are different ways to actually track a contact form. And one of the easiest ways is when you set up Google Analytics for sometimes and you have a form submit event, that will automatically track when a form is submitted on your website. I'm not gonna be going through that specifically in this video today. I'm gonna to be going over how to use Google Tag Manager to understand what your form actually does when you submit it so that you can actually track it. Now, my favorite method to track a contact form is to use the thank you page. So a thank you page redirect, when somebody fills out the entire contact form, clicks on send message, they go directly to a standalone thank you page on your website that nobody would ever find unless they actually filled out your contact form. So if you actually take your form and you set it up to redirect to a thank you page, that is the easiest way to track it. Let's just assume you, you can't do that with your form. Let's just assume you are working for a client and you don't have the ability to do that with a form. I'm going to get started first by showing you how to use Google Tag Manager to actually track what the form does when you submit it. So if we get started here, the very first thing you need to do is install Google Tag Manager on your website. So when you have Google Tag Manager, go to install Google Tag Manager from the admin tab if you haven't installed it already or create your Tag Manager account. It's completely free to create and use. So you need to put these two pieces of code on your website. And if we come to the back end of my WordPress website, you can see I have WP code here. So we have our Google Tag Manager here, and we want to take this piece of code and paste it as high as possible underneath the opening header tag. And then we want to take the second piece of code and paste it in the next box. So the body uh, underneath the opening body tag here. So you can see right here, we have header and we have body and you want to put those two tags here, click on save changes, and then you have Google Tag Manager installed on your website. So that's the very first step to get started. Now we're also going to have to create a Google ads conversion and then use that to actually set up our conversion. But before we do that, let's actually see what our contact form does when we submit it. So my contact form right now, if we come over to my form page, I am using Forminator for this contact form. There are plenty of contact form solutions. So obviously I've worked with different clients who use different contact form solutions, use different website DMSs and all sorts of different things. So not every form is going to be the same, but this form is set up right now that when it is filled out, we can do, and we look over here at behavior. When somebody does fill it out and click on submit, the behavior is in line. Thank you for contacting us. We'll be in touch shortly. When we look at some of the behaviors that we can do, this is my favorite one to do is redirect URL to send people directly to a thank you page. I will show you how to do this after we do this first part. Right now I have it set to an inline message. So that means the form is not redirecting when somebody fills it out. So if we come over to our contact form, what we wanna do is we wanna take this page, copy it, go over to Google Tag Manager, go to your workspace, and then you want to click on preview, enter that URL, and then open the Google Tag Manager. Okay. So everything that's happening on this page on my website, Google Tag Manager is tracking over here on the left-hand side. So even if I just come over here to the form and I click right here, we just click on the first name part of the form and we look over here, you're going to see a click. So that is going to be the very first thing I want to show you is every single thing that you do when you are using Google Tag Assistant is going to be tracked. So if you look over here at variables, there are a ton of different variables in here that you can track and you can actually set up these as a conversion like you could set up pretty much anything as a conversion in Google Ads or you can actually track it in Google Analytics 4 if you wanted to now there are automatic events in Google Analytics 4 form start and form submit they don't track for every single form type but generally if you have a form on your website like if you do have this form on your website that will track I will create a separate video for how to do that but I just wanted to go over that first but if we come over here and we are coming back to our Google Tag Assistant I want to take a quick break from my video tutorial to tell you about my two free training videos. My first is my one, two, three, four, five Google ads training that will give you a process to be successful with Google ads. Go to surfsideppc.com slash training to get access to that. The other one is going to be my from zero to 5k per month roadmap. This is going to be an inbound marketing training that's going to teach you how to drive more leads and grow your business. So you go to surfsideinbound.com and you can access that one. Let's get back to our tutorial. We come to the page here and I'm going to fill out this form and then I'm going to click on send message. 
Okay, and you see I filled out first name, email, phone number, message, and we wanna click on send message. Now coming over here, you can see click, click, click. Now the method I'm gonna show you is not my favorite method to use. My favorite method to use is the redirect, which I already said, but this is not my favorite method to use. I would much prefer to use the form submit if you are, if you do have a form like this. This form is not gonna register that event in Google Tag Manager. So when we click on send message, what's gonna happen is it's submitting, and then you're gonna see, thank you for contacting us, we'll be in touch shortly. The page doesn't redirect, it all just stays right here, and you're like, how do I track this page? Well, in Google Tag Assistant, they will actually give you a bunch of variables that we can track, and there are a couple different things that we can track here. And one of the ones that we can track here is the click classes, you're gonna see has formator button, formator button submit. So this is something that we can track right here. Over here with click, you can see formator show, formator success. But this isn't actually something that we can track because this tracked when I actually clicked on that. So I clicked on the text, thank you for contacting us, we'll be in touch shortly. Not everyone is gonna be clicking on that. So we are gonna come over here to the 11th click and I think it's the 11th click. No, it's the 10th click. So on the 10th click, we clicked on the text send message here. So that is gonna be the one that we actually clicked on. And there's gonna be a form class here, Forminator button submit. So if we come over here and we look at all these variables, these are what we can actually track. Now, the one thing that could potentially happen with a form like this is somebody clicks on submit and that click happens, but there's an error with the form and it's never submitted. So that could potentially be an issue. The the way this form is set up, and you can see this right here, if I click on send message and this isn't doesn't actually send anything, it will still track that as a conversion. So that's why this is not my preferred method, but this is kind of a workaround that you can use. So if we come over here to, we exit out of Google Tag Assistant for now, we come back over to Google Tag Manager. What we need to do is we need to create a new tag in Tag Manager. Before we do that, go to variables and make sure that you have some of these different variables enabled. So go to configure and you wanna make sure you have these click variables enabled and you wanna make sure you have these form variables enabled as well now you can do every single variable here there's no downside really to doing more variables it just happens to uh, give you more information and everything like that for these for this purpose what I need this for forms clicks are what we want to track right now so over here you can see all the different tags that I've created so the very first thing before we even create our tags, let's come over to Google Ads and let's create our conversion action. So it's gonna be our contact form conversion action. I'll give you a couple different ways that we can track this to make it a lot easier. So let's start, it is a website conversion. We enter our website here, click on scan, and then it's gonna say this website domain is linked to a Google Analytics account. We can do that, but we're just gonna use a add a conversion action manually. And you're gonna see select category for this. So this is gonna be contact. We will say contact form example. Let's set a value of just one for every conversion. So every conversion that comes in, we're going to count as $1. So you can always increase this value if you want to value the conversion higher. Obviously it's a lead. So I'm just counting it as one lead every time it comes in. For the count, we want to set this to one. So for leads, you always want to set this to one. Click through conversion window. So 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. You can make this longer, especially if it's like B2B because the contacts lead time is generally a little bit longer. Engage view conversion window, so generally I'll just keep these as is. So at attribution will be data driven, enhanced conversions managed through the Google tag, we'll click on done. And now we can click on save and continue. We have our conversion goal here. We are ready to set this up using Google Tag Manager. They're gonna give us our instructions. So we're gonna click on use Google Tag Manager, conversion ID, contact form example. This is our conversion label. So let's come over to Tag Manager, the other thing down here. Make sure you add a conversion linker and configure it to fire on all your web pages. So you want to make sure you do that. Let's close this page. You want to make sure you do that first. You can see my conversion linker right here. So when you click on new tag, tag configuration, you're going to click on Google ads, and then you're going to click on the conversion linker tag and under triggering, you're going to do all pages. So that's all you're going to need to do. Name your tag, save it. And that's it, how easy it is to set up the conversion linker tag. We could discard this for now. You can see mine set up here, conversion linker, conversion linker, all pages. So very easy to set that one up. Next is going to be tracking the form submission. So we're going to set up a new conversion action. So we come over here to new and the tag, we're going to do contact form example. You could also name this Google ads conversion, whatever you want to name it. Come over to tag configuration, Google ads, Google ads conversion tracking. And what we want to do is we want to take our conversion ID and the conversion label that they gave us over here. So we have our ID and our conversion label down here and we paste both of those. Okay. So now we need to set a trigger. So the trigger that we are going to use for right now, we're just going to click on all pages. So we're going to click on save, but the trigger that we are actually going to use is when we did 
open up Google Tag Assistant and set our form. What we did, and we could just click on send message here because that's all we're tracking basically. So we come over here to Tag Assistant, we look at the click. But within this click, you can see the tags and then the variables. Now I set up a tag as an example, this already tracked, I'll show you exactly how I did that. So within the variables here, you're gonna see GTM click, triggers is going to be two comma three we have our url we have the click class here send message now there's nothing here at least that i saw that shows any type of error met with this form so if you're working with a client and you're like i need to track this form but i don't know how to do this in an easy way the client doesn't isn't going to be able to let you change it to a thank you page or something like that you can come in here and you can see form classes is a data later layer variable and you could see the string is formulator button and formulator button submit so we could take this right here formulator button submit and we can just copy that form class come back over to google tag manager and you can see i actually did this in one of my conversions over here so within email clicks example, you can see within this trigger that we have the form classes and we just did contains form forminator button submit. So that's tracking every time somebody clicks on that send message button. Now, the way this could potentially work is if somebody, we have it set to one conversion in Google ads. So if somebody clicks this, let's just say the form doesn't submit and they didn't enter their email address correctly, they didn't enter their name correctly, whatever it might be, whatever error message they got, what we can do is basically if they do fix that error and click on send message, the way we have it tracked in Google ads is to only track one conversion. So theoretically, people aren't gonna come in here and click on this button unless they're actually trying to send us a message. So what we can do is just take that form class contains formator button submit for click all elements. And that's all we need to do to set up this new conversion action that we have. So this is our contact form example. We did our conversion ID, our conversion label, a Google ads conversion tracking tag, and then our trigger down here. Obviously we don't want this to trigger on all pages that will count it as a conversion every single time within the trigger. You click on the plus sign up here at the top, set your trigger configuration, and you're going to do click and you're gonna do all elements. Now, if we click this and we come in, we're gonna do some clicks and we could do when the form classes contains formator button submit and we'll name this our, okay, so contact form button clicked, click on save. So that is one way that we can do this. The other way to do this, and if we come back over here one more time and we look at the variables here, is the other way is the click text on the button is send message. So that's another one that you can set and you can also set both of them. So you could basically say, okay, if somebody's clicking on, so you could either have this one, you could have the click text. So that is the actual text on the button contains send message. This will also track properly. You can remove one of these. These are both of these conditions have to be true for this to count as a conversion. Since that is what's going to happen every time somebody fills out our contact form, we can set it up like this. The only reason why I'm not a huge fan of doing that is if somebody goes in and changes the send must send message to, I don't know, contact us now or whatever it might be, schedule an appointment, then it's no longer tracking that. So I prefer to use the actual button submit because then it takes away that extra variable. We can click on save here. We click on save again. And now we submit this and we say version name new and we'll say another version name new and we'll publish this. Okay, so now we have this submitted. Let's open up our preview one more time for our, our contact page. Let's close these other ones. Okay, we're back in here one final time. Let's fill out our form again. Okay, we got our form all filled out and we can come over here. You can see we have all these different clicks that are starting to register, but nothing has registered yet as far as the tags that have fired. So when we do this, we should have two tags firing, the email clicks example that I set and then the new one that we did, the contact form example. So let's click on send message and there we go. Thank you for contacting us. We will be in touch shortly. If we go over to the 12, you can see the two different tags that fired. So we know that our conversion tracking is working. Obviously this isn't a perfect setup because there is the scenario where somebody he clicks on the button and doesn't actually fill out the form, but that's something that you just kind of deal with. If you're running Google ads, if you see an excess of conversions coming in and you're not seeing the actual form submissions, well then, you know, you need to change the setup and how you have this, uh, how you have this actually working. But in my years of experience, I've never really seen that happening. Let's exit both of these and let's come back over here one more time to our form. 
this is the much easier way to actually track this conversion. So the whole process of setting up your conversion ID, conversion label, you don't have to do any of that again. Really, the different ways to track your conversion is once you have it set up the way that we just did, so we have the contact form example here, is just updating the trigger down here at the bottom. So basically, what is the form doing that will allow us to track it? So let's come back over to our website, the back end of our website one more time. If we click here, edit behavior, we do redirect user to a URL. We redirect them to a thank you page. Click on apply, update our form. Okay, so we have that updated now. So we come over to our page. Let's make sure we refresh our page. So after submission, thank you. Let's just double check that this is completely updated. Okay, so we should be all good to go here now. I like to check it one final time when we go in just to make sure. Uh, so we'll click on edit here and we will see behavior. So you could do this with pretty much any form plugin as well. So there we go. After submission, not inline. Yeah, redirect user to a, okay. Let's change our label again. And we're gonna save it one more time, update, refresh the page. Okay, so now when we fill out this form, you saw it's gonna immediately go to a thank you page. So what we wanna do now is in Google Tag Manager, this is why I like using the thank you page is if there are errors on that form, people will never find that thank you page. It's very rare someone's gonna click on one of your Google ads and go to your thank you page without filling out the form first. It's just not something that happens. So this is why it's my preferred method is using some type of confirmation page like this. So if we come over here, it's also very easy to track. If we come over here, what we can do is instead of having contact form button sub, or formulator button submit as our trigger, we're gonna click here. We're gonna do page view. We're gonna do some page views when the page URL contains, and you could just do thank you, just like this. Okay, so now we have page URL contains thank you. That is going to be our trigger. Now, Obviously, what you want to do is contact form thank you page, update your trigger so it's actually named correctly. So click on save. You don't need to do that. The names are just for you. In our contact form example, we have our conversion ID and our conversion label that we had over here. And then now our trigger has just changed to a contact form thank you page. Click on X over here. Click on X again. Okay, so we should, yep, we got this all set up. Now let's do our new version here. Click on publish and we are going to preview this one more time using the Google Tag Assistant. Okay, we fill out our entire form here and you can see over here, it's still tracking everything that we had and then we click on send message and now we redirect to a thank you page. This is another reason why I like to do it. Tell people to call or text you. It just gives them another way to contact you, especially if you're like a, a local service company. Then people fill out your contact form. You could say, why don't you just give us a call real quick? We'll get you booked. That's, I mean, that's the preferred conversion is the phone call. Uh, but you'll see over here, now we have this click we have this click, so that's just me clicking on things. We have this contact Aqua Bliss Care. So this is the one that we just did. The tags that fired when we did this, you can see conversion linker, desktop phone calls that tracks on every page, but only counts when it's a 60 second phone call. Google Analytics 4 tag, our email clicks example tracked because we clicked on that button. The desktop phone call example one is the same as this one. So 11 tags did not fire. So basically if you come over here, you see no tags fired, no tags fired, container loaded, and there we go. Now we have our Google ads conversion for a thank you page. And that is one that I set up. Here is the one that we actually did, contact form example. So making it a lot easier with the contact form example and knowing that somebody actually is, is filled out that form because they went to the thank you page. So that is the main reason why I like using the thank you page as a conversion. And now we come over here, click on done. And now we are tracking our con contact form as a conversion. It is the contact form example one here. I have way too many conversions set up just doing a lot of tutorials. But within that contact form example, you just want to double check that your actual campaign itself within the campaign settings is set up to actually optimize for that conversion. So we come over here to settings one more time. And then we come over here to our conversion goals. You'll see contacts is one of them. Contact form example, since it's showing green, it's showing that this is tracking properly because they were able to see that it tracked correctly in the Google Tag Assistant. So if you have any questions about tracking a contact form and how to do it, please leave them in the comment section. This should allow you to track pretty much any contact form on a website. The easiest way to do it is just set it up to redirect, create a thank you page, put a button on the thank you page to tell people to call you directly or promote something. It's it's a lot better to use a thank you page in my opinion and also know that your form is actually submitted. So thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.
A quick 30 second promotion, if you like my content, I have a Google Ads course available, 21 lessons over 10 hours for $34.99. You can access it by going to surfsideppc.com slash course. That will give you all the information you need to run successful Google Ads campaigns. If you're interested in learning how to drive more leads for your business, join Surfside Inbound. It's $4.99 a month. It's available on Patreon. It's available through my YouTube membership, and you'll get access to all of my premium content, including a five and a half hour inbound marketing course. Thank you, and let's get back to the video.